Okay, let's see if this works. Fingers are crossed. So can you all hear me okay? This time I'm going through OBS. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if it works. Hold on, I gotta pull up the chat now. Um, okay. Today has been a wacky, crazy day. It really has. Hold on. Can you all hear me okay? Okay, that's good. Woo! Okay, let me just fix this real quick. All right, that's better. Woo! Okay. So, first of all, I want to say <laughs> when I I came live late because I'm uh, taking on this new project at work and there's like no telling what time I'm going to be off work. So, the plan was to do this live at 6:30, you know? And then I just <laughs> couldn't leave work. So, yeah. Now here I am and I feel really bad because Becky is live right now. I went, I was going to just cancel the live. I didn't want to, but I didn't see a scheduled live for Becky. So that's when I decided to come on. So here I am. So let me just say hi to everyone. My hands are all dirty now. Um, Aiden. Hi, Aiden, Michael. Aiden is my, is my son's brother. Not my son, <laughs> but he, like Aiden's not my son, but he is my son's father's son. Yeah, but we're all really close. <laughs> How are you doing there, buddy? Aiden Michael. Aw. Hello, Rivka. Frog Pond. Hey! Do you know Crashly personally? She's my brother's mom. You know, Aiden, most people would be like, <laughs> so is she your mom? <laughs> Just so everyone's not confused. Me and my ex are really close. I don't know. We're BFFs. Uh, Jill. Hey, Terry Lynn. What's up? Valerie. Ooh, brother Jeremy. Hello. Hello, Brian. Welcome, welcome, y'all. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, odd but nice. We'll see you soon. So today we're going to do Makume Gane. Have you guys ever heard of Makume Gane? It's like, it's the one where you stab stuff, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, I gotta take my ring off. Ugh. So you've probably seen me do Makume Gane and other tutorials. So, I'm just going to do like a higher level overview if I can get my ring off. Yeah, I'm going to try to make this one quick because again, Becky's live and I mean absolutely no disrespect and I'm very sorry. But y'all things things happen, okay? So, Mukume Gane is basically when you take different colors of clay sheets and stack them on top of each other and then you pierce it or stab it with stuff and then it makes a really cool pattern okay that's basically what it is hello tina welcome so i thought maybe for like fourth of july that's coming up maybe we could try red white and blue you know i wish i had a pen to show you that was makume ganaid but i don't think i have one around here Nope, but if you guys remember the dolphin pen I made, if you saw that, yeah, that base of that pen was Makumegane. Do I have any red? Oh, I only have this much red. Oh, wait, there's more. Hmm, now I gotta decide what kind of blue to use. Okay, we have red, so we are good. Hello, Yvonne! Red. So now we have to choose the blue. This is more like a sparkly blue. Hmm. Or, well, that's not enough of that. And then we need white, which I have the big thing of. Oop, or we have this kind of blue. Oh my gosh. So many blues to choose from and so little time. Oh, which one are we gonna pick? America! Oh yeah! Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that kid. Oh, here's another blue. There's a lot of blues to choose from. Somebody's got the blues. <laughs> mm, okay, that's all the blues. Okay, and then here is white. And we'll take the translucent out because you never know. So, which blue do you all like more? Mm. That's gonna be a tough call. 
so like a red, white, and blue. Dad joke. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you have a dark blue? So this is the sparkle blue. It's kind of like a lighter one. This is more like a turquoise, I think is what this one. Yeah, turquoise. So really the darker ones are this. One is navy, one is ultramarine. So I think maybe the ultramarine because it's not as super crazy dark. So you think mix this blue with sparkle blue, huh? So here's the sparkle blue. That would be pretty. Okay, let's do it. So this is all the red I have though. So <laughs> we need we need like blue balls. <laughs> a blue ball that matches the same size. I didn't even do that one on purpose, by the way. Aiden, you're going to put in some input, buddy. When are you going to come visit me again? We're putting the pool up. So this year, because we do have a pool, I'm sure you guys saw, but <laughs> we had to clean it all. And every year, my son has trouble swimming in it, Aiden's brother, Zach, because my son is very skinny, tiny, and he gets cold really easily. And so he has to like wear a shirt or like he can only swim for so long. So we're filling it up a little at a time and then letting it sit in the sun to, I don't know, I guess in my brain, it makes me think it's going to heat up the, the water better. I don't know. Um, I got news today from my boss may not be working one to two years. Well, is he going to be paying you for that one to two years? Valerie, I don't know if I said hi to you, but hey. So this is how I mix colors. I have to condition the clay anyway. So I just kind of work it all together. And again, we did the, it was the ultramarine and then the sparkle blue. I don't know if the sparkle blue has a fancy, oh, blue glitter is the name of this kind. And yeah, I only use Primo. So maybe it would go faster. Oh dang, where's my crank? Turn my pasta machine. Hmm. Oh, I don't know where my handle went to the pasta machine. Uh. All right. Hmm, I don't know where it went. Oh yeah, I think it fell back there once upon a time. Oh. We'll have to figure it out. How original. <laughs> have you guys been on this fine, fine, what is it, Tuesday evening? <laughs> I forget what day it is sometimes. Ugh. This is really a hand workout. Hold on a second. I'm going to go see if I have a handle over there. Just a moment, please. You know what, Kerwin said I should have kept my my broken pasta machine parts, and I don't think I did. Hold on. One second. You guys have this place in your house where if something falls down it you think that you're never gonna see it again <laughs> that's where it just fell I have a horseshoe desk and if things fall off the back of my desk yeah you're probably never gonna see it again but this time I like <laughs> turned my body into a noodle and just wedged myself back there hey Care Bear 
you forget that it's Tuesday on Tutorial Tuesday. Aiden, you zip your lip, buddy. <laughs> Why is it to mix them? Because it made me think of the star. Aw, that's a good idea. The oven. What? Okay, now I'm going to roll this through. Now that I've finally got my hanger, or my, my turner, and try to mix this. Ooh, that's pretty. So when you roll it through the pasta machine, if you're gonna do it more than once, you wanna make sure you fold and then not catch any air bubbles down there. Air bubbles are not our friend. Vivian, hi! My son, who never to see his 10th birthday, turned 23 today, so spent it celebrating. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm glad you're able to celebrate though. Oh, that makes me sad. Been out of a job since December. It's depressing when people ask me when I'm going to get a job. Oh gosh. Tell people to mind their own business, man. Gosh. Sometimes I think people don't have anything better to do than to worry about other people. Like, geez. All right. So now I'm just trying to make it into like a squarish. Um, look, I got an air bubble. So that way I can stack the colors on top of each other. That works. So this is the blue we got out of mixing. So you can see the sparkles and it's pretty. Good idea, Brian. He is alive. Doc was wrong. Oh my gosh, Tina. I thought you meant like who was never to see his birthday. I thought you meant he died. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm very glad that he's okay. We're going to have to like guess on the white here. And usually you're supposed to like wipe your hands before like going from working with a colored clay to white, but well, I do what I want. In a modern day society, privacy is close to non-existent. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about, Aiden? <laughs> Air bubbles are evil. Yes, they are. A friend of mine, I was helping her make a pen and <laughs> She baked the clay not knowing that there, or baked a pen, not knowing that there was air bubbles under it. And yeah, it cracked while it baked. It was awful. I felt really bad. I type slow. <laughs> That's what the doc said would happen. We just proved him wrong. Good. Good. All right. So I just conditioned the white. I'm just running that through now. I've been waiting to do my own DP pens. I bought the clay already, but I think I need that machine, right? But you don't really need this machine, no. <laughs> like, there are definitely ways to, uh, to work around having the machine. And I'm sure Jeremy can like vouch for this. The machine simply makes it so much easier to condition clay and to get even pieces. But you don't have to like wait for it by any means. Ugh, I'm pretty off, huh? So like, for example, if you have two things that are the same width, like two bricks of clay here, okay? Let me find an unopened one. Like two bricks of clay. No, they're the same width. You can condition some clay Oof. Now again, you may not get it like exactly precise, but like who cares? <laughs> I don't. You gotta condition it, of course. There we go. So you can put it in between the two things and then get a rolling pin or yeah, your acrylic thing. Yeah, maybe two things of clay wasn't the right idea, <laughs> but still you can roll it out this way like decks of cards work or um, like if you have two long boxes like this 
then you can just set them side by side and then roll it out. And then you have, you know, the thickness that you want evenly. So again, the pasta machine is not a necessity. It's just, it makes claying easier, you know? It really does. All right. Oh yeah, I just remembered. So I needed red for my last project and I ran out of red Primo. So I mixed that, um, oh God, what's it called? Is it Primo? Oh no, I mixed Kato with my Primo red so I can get more of it. So this clay is a little sticky and it sucks. Ooh, Tina, 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 Tina. Okay, now, now we can stack, but I usually like to do four colors at a time. Hmm. Maybe we can add some translucent up in there. What do you guys think? Translucent is my favorite. So especially with Makume Gane, because if you use a translucent sheet like this, ugh, hold on, then it gives the Makume Gane like a three dimensional, what's it called? Yeah, three dimensional kind of look. Like it looks like they're in, the colors are inside of one another. I don't know, it's fancy. Oof. There we go. I love this translucent. Like I, I use translucent more than any other clay ever. Like it's my favorite thing. <laughs> it's my favorite clay. This and sparkle silver, I think. Just because translucent, like I said, I love the effect that it can give. Right now I'm just kind of trying to... Gives it depth. Thank you, Valerie. You're always there when I need help with words. Words are hard. Right, Aiden. <laughs> I don't know why I said right, Aiden. Aiden, how old are you now? Probably like 11 or something. I don't even remember. I remember your birthday. Because it's right next to my birthday. Which is coming up! Now I'm too wide. Eh. <laughs> oh god, I love that kid. Okay, that'll work, maybe. No. Not quite. I don't know, maybe I should do it this way. Redo. You're 12 in about a month. Gosh, you're getting old, kid. You're gonna have to start paying taxes soon. I'm just saying. I remember when you were pipsqueak and you were obsessed with DJ Lance and gosh, yo Gabba Gabba. That's what it was. Oh my God, this kid would not let us watch anything else but yo Gabba freaking Gabba. That's all he wanted to watch. Yo Gabba Gabba, yo Gabba Gabba, yeah. There's a party in my tummy, so yummy. So, dude, I still have, <laughs> I still have the songs memorized. What'd you do to me, Aiden? Zach wasn't much better with his um, PJ mask, p p PJ masks. Annoying shows. No offense, homie, no offense. Sorry, I'm trying to get this to roll out the same kind of shape. Yeah, that'll do. Mm, need it a wee bit wider, then we're good. So I think I'll put this in between the white and whatever color, maybe. Does that show even exist anymore? I really don't know. Thomas the Train. Yeah, he watched that. He he liked to play with the toys more than he liked watching the actual show, I think. There you go. So, let's see. What order should these be in? Let's think. Hmm. So, it should be like red. Yeah, let's do the translucent. Here. Or, you know what we could do? We can make this one thinner. Let's take it down to a three. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this one 
thinner and then put it in between each layer. How about that? I might need to get more. Yo, Gabba, Gabba. Yo, Gabba, Gabba. Ah! <laughs> now it's stuck in my head. I remember Yo, Gabba, Gabba. I love Biz Markle with Biz's beat of the day. Oh, yeah. I kind of remember that. For me, like, anything was fine except for Teletubbies. That was one that I can't tolerate. Mm -mm -mm. I'm thinking the white needs to go next. Yeah. So then we're going to stack. And again, these are rolled out on the thickest setting. The translucent I rolled out on a three. So, like, on my pasta machine, zero is the thickest setting. Oof. All right. So now I'm gonna roll this back out on a three. And this is just more translucent. Teletubbies scare me, right? Like when I found out that those things were six feet tall, no, like I'm out. It's not happening. You know what show I just finished though? <laughs> 13 Reasons Why. Oh my god, that show had me blubbering like a baby. Like a wee baby. Alright. Is that a hole? Oh, I'm going to put it through one more. Yo, Gabba, Gabba. <sighs> once you sing it once. Okay, so we got red. Put this right there. And I'm just kind of lightly brushing it off like this. Oh, you know what? Actually, I changed my mind. I know, I keep changing my mind because I'm a psycho. If I put those through, these two through, uh, I was going to run it through the pasta machine. Yeah, I think I still will. Okay. Like, sometimes if I'm doing an even amount of colors, I'll put two at a time through the pasta machine on the thickest setting. But since I'm not, it wouldn't make too much sense to do that. There we go. I think that this one needs to be wider. Mm. I need more blue, homie. Maybe I could stretch it out. Yeah, that'll be fine. Mm. Yeah, we wing it around here. Oof. What did Aiden say? When translucent play sends out, like, it makes me think of turkey lunch meat. What? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't remember Yo Gava Gava heard of it. The Teletubbies are my sleep paralysis demons. What the hell? Aiden, that's a creepy thing to say. <laughs> so, okay, so now we have a clay sandwich, right? And now we're going to roll it out with our roller. I kind of bunch it together. Um, where'd my crawler go? There it is. And then we're gonna run it through the pasta machine on the thickest setting. And then we're gonna stack it. Cut, stack, cut, stack. So I'm just rolling it out so I don't break the pasta machine. Because I have the Atlas pasta machine, which is a higher quality one, <laughs> but I'm still not a crazy person. Okay, let's put this back on a zero. Just stretching it out a little bit. Now I'm always going to have that image in my head, Brian. Yeah, I know. Me too. Thanks a lot, buddy. There you go, Valerie. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to run it through long ways. Thickest setting. Steak, baby. There we go. All right. Now we just have the long strip. You can still see the little lines here. Not too much though. So now we're going to cut it in half. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody measures nowadays. It's 2020. <laughs> and we're going to stack. There we go. 
out. So I lined it up. And now I'm going to lift this up a little bit more. Oh, Thanos. How does he possibly get his hair in my clay? Okay. Now I'm just going to reset it down, but I'm going to push. Just make sure there's no air bubbles in between my layers. Because ain't nobody got time for that. Turkey club, I'm eating glazed chips right now. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to cut it in half again. Alright, and I left a little bit extra hanging off. There we go. Try to line it up. Okay. And that's just pushing the air out. No air bubbles, please. Okay, see, we're getting a sandwich here. I think we're going to go ahead and do it one more time. Uno mas. Just cutting in half again. Mm. And the reason I, I made this side a lot smaller than this side on purpose because I know I'm going to have um, extra clay over here that I'm going to trim off anyway. There we go. All right. And we want them stacked in the same order. If you saw that, like I'm not going to flip the layers around. I always want the red on the bottom. You know what I mean? Hopefully that made sense. All right. Now I'm going to trim a little bit of this off here. Just a wee bit. And again, I'm not going to go like super deep into trimming because it's makumegane. The messiness is what makes it cool. All right. So here's our big old stack. Okay. And we want it to be nice and thick because we are about to start stabbing it because we're crazy people. All right. So I'm just going to kind of smush it together because I want to make sure but I don't have any air bubbles in there or it'll ruin my design. Me too, Valerie. This is absolutely my favorite. And you know what? You can never get the same design either. Like I was kind of nervous about putting <laughs> red, white, and blue together because they're just, I don't know. I don't know if those colors are going to look very good in a Makume Gane. So <laughs> fair warning, but you can do as many colors as you want, you know, like, Pinks and purples are pretty, um, like it's also really pretty if you add like a black in here or a silver. I've never done it with red, white, and blue, so I don't know how those colors will match. What's up? Nora? Oh, it was Thanos. Jeez, that was weird. Peek-a-boo. Oh gosh, you got me, kid. You got me. Yeah. Hey, Nora, guess who's in the chat right now of the live? What? Aiden. Mm. Do you know who that is? You remember Aiden, don't you? Yeah. That's what I figured. Do you want to say hi? Mm -hmm. Okay, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Aiden, Nora says hi. Okay, can you go shut my door now? Okay. Love you. Get some clothes on. Crazy kid. All right, so I just kind of reduced it, and I'm using my rolling pin just to flatten it out. There we go. All right. And I want to keep the thickness because basically what we're going to do it is we're going to, to pierce the clay. So the colors kind of collide and then we're going to like skim off layer by layer. And each layer is going to have a different looking design. Let's see. Flesh, you get out a lot of aggression. That's right. Oh my god. All right. So we got it nice and thick, so I think it's good. That's about how thick we got it. All right. I'm going to give it one more roll up top here so it can be flattish. There we go. Now is where the fun part comes in. Jen! Hi, Jen! Welcome to Makume Gane night. 
Isn't that fun? <laughs> For the longest time when I learned about polymer clay, I thought this technique was called Makume Gain. I don't know. Why do my hands look so red? I'm using OBS, so everything just looks different to me. But tell me, for those of you who were here last week, is my video and audio still cutting in and out the same, or is it better? Hi, Dixie! Welcome! If I missed you coming in, I'm sorry. I am <laughs> still getting used to doing tutorial live streams, so I'm doing my best. It's not as hard to clay and talk as I thought it would be, though. Very easy to get distracted, however. Uh, let's see. Now is where you figure out what you want to pierce it through. So again, you're not quite cutting the clay. You just want to poke holes in it to kind of make the clay meld together. It'll make more sense once we're done. So I have, get rid of this. I have multiple different cutters in here. And these I literally just found in the kitchen or at resale shops. I think one of the packages Pippa bought me, I think this big silver one. And then these I just kind of accumulated. You know, I don't, I couldn't tell you where they come from, but you can find cookie cutters or, or little cutters like this absolutely anywhere. You know what I mean? So you kind of figure out what kind of design you're going for because the shapes that you choose to pierce it with will have an impact on the end result. So for example, for the um, dolphin pin I did for Ribka, I wanted, I did the Makume gain and Makume Gane. <laughs> I just used the Makume gain now. Um, and I wanted like a water ripple kind of thing. So I just went around the house and found random objects that had, that were like circular that I could pierce it with. You know what I mean? Um, it's much better than last week. All right, well, there we go. I can't figure out Sunday Social then because I have to do that through StreamYard, but this is through OBS, so that's the difference. Use stars for red, red, white, and blue. See, and that's another thing. I could use stars. Yes. But they just have to be different sizes, which is cool because, like, I have this big one, and that one's not much smaller. Let's look. I don't know what this one's supposed to be, but it kind of looks like a star <laughs> so we can still go for like the rounded kind of shape that looks kind of like a star oh look here's a giant one of these hey oh yeah you want different sizes hmm that's kind of like a star maybe there's a moon there's a bunch of leaves in here too which is weird all right I guess I don't have like a legit star though, like a five pointer. Unless I'm blind. Oh, look at the little heart! <laughs> that's a flower, that's a leaf. What's this? Oh, we can use that one. There's another heart. Alright, I don't think I have anything else. So. Now, if I went around, like, my kitchen and around the house, I could probably find other things that I could use, you know? Like, you can use, if you wanted an open circle, you could use the bottom of a drill pen. See? It's cool. You can use all sorts of things, whatever you want. So, also with this... Hold on. So Jen actually got me this, <laughs> Jen Jen. So she surprised me with blades and the blade package that she got me happened to come with a giant tissue blade and they all came with these handles. I just don't have them on. And then this size one and this curvy one. Um, I don't know how much it is or how much she paid for it, but I know for a fact it's on Amazon. All right, so I also have like these kinds of tools too are fun to use with Makume Gani. Whatever you want. So we're going to start with 
kind of just cutting the longer lines first, I think. Let me put these back. What did I just get the cut on? Oh, I put it back. Here we go. All right. Yeah, that sounds way better. And no buffering. Sweet. Uh, use the stars for the red, white, and blue. I will be using the stars. Yes, Tina. Good idea. Hi, Dixie Dixie. Uh, let's see. Crashly, how does it feel to have all your cutters organized? They were all in one place, Jen. All I had to do is go to my stack and grab this. So you got me. It, it it's it's nice. I'll have to admit. I think I'm actually gonna take this circle too. And see this one. I bought a bead maker. Like you know, you can make polymer clay beads. And this came with that. But I really just wanted the little needle tool thing, which I have no idea where that one is. It's what I used to put the eyes in. This. I just wanted this tool, and I guess you couldn't buy it individually. This is actually a bead maker, but I just use it for Makume Gane. Um, star cutter and wavy blade. Yes. So this is where you just decide how you want your design to look. So I like to start with the bigger parts first. So you can make different lines going whatever ways you want. And if you're using a blade such as this, you can tell which part is the short part because it has this little line. And with these, the handles should be at the top. So this is the part that's not sharp. Now remember with Makume Gane, or damn it, Makume, yeah, Makume Gane is the right one, sorry. You don't want to really cut the clay, you want to pierce it. So instead of using the sharp blade that's meant to cut, I'm going to use the other end that's not so sharp. Okay, there. Uh, the wavy blade would make beautiful stripes. Yes, it would. But when we cut the slivers, we're going to just piece it together so they won't stay stripes. So what I was thinking is we can do a couple different ones going diagonally. So again, I'm not using the sharp end. I'm using the duller one so it goes down and that's okay. Just kind of wiggling it around since it's not as sharp because I want to, uh, what's it called, deform the clay? Is that the right word? No. And then you can kind of push it back together just to make sure it doesn't come apart. Okay, so you can see it cut through. But see how, it distort, it's distorting the clay. <laughs> That's what I meant. So I got the waves in and I can add more if I want to. So now, we're going to pierce it with, I don't know, this guy. And we're going to go through here. It's kind of stab it, you know, whatever. I'm going to try to go down as much as we can. Just wiggle it around. And then, yeah, see this one, it came out with it, which is okay. We're just going to try to shove it back in there. Use, like, the other half of this. And then just push it out. Like, the goal is to distort the clay. So like it's okay if it <laughs> goes in there as a blob, which this one really is going in there like a blob. Jeez Louise. All right. I'm <laughs> just trying to fix this a wee bit. Shove it back in there like it'll be fine. I assure you. All right, because once we're done, we're going to be pushing it all together anyway. Let's try this bigger one and see if that comes out easier. All right, now we're going to take it out slowly. There, that one stayed in there. Thank you. All right, let's try this big one. So we're just stabbing it all over and you can overlap them. Pushing it through, wiggling it carefully out. That stayed in there, thank you. Mm, let's put another one over here actually. So many different things you can do. And I'm just gonna kind of push it together. Yes, this is going to be awesome. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some circles up in here. Just wiggling it around. There we go. 
Let's see. And I think since these colors are so different, I don't want to like overdo it. But at the same time, I kind of do because that's just who I am. Now I'm going to take my stabby stab, which is, I think, meant to pierce balls of clay to make them into beads. So I'm just going to put a little one there. One in the middle, just randomly. And this was Jeremy like, hey, this is where you can get your aggression out. <laughs> All right, now I'm just gonna kind of push it together, fill some of those holes up there. All right. What do you guys think? You think we should keep stabbing it? Looks pretty. I don't know. Let's see. It's gonna be amazing like all of her clay masterpieces. Oh gosh, stop that. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I kinda feel like we did a circle there and a circle there. See, maybe we can get another star down across this star here. I only worry because these blue ones don't seem to like to detach from the clay. Oh, that one did. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if any would blend as purple if they were together. That's what I was kind of wondering with the red and the blue. So, I mean, I guess we'll see. If we get pigments of purple, then whatever. That just adds to the coolness, right? side right here is a little bland. Let me add one right there. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. Oh, great. That one came out. I meant didn't come out. There we go. All right. Now I'm just going to push it together. All right. Uh, see, I did the two waves. So I did the two waves going this way diagonally. So I think I'm gonna make them going this way too. And it's just pushing all those stripes together. This is gonna be awesome. All right. Push them back together. All right, now I'm gonna put one right in the middle where I did that star. All right, I think we're good. So this is what it looks like so far. Just a bunch of stabs and cuts. That's what the sides look like. The stripes are still kind of there, okay? Now, see, look at what that red, oh gosh, I don't like Kato. It bleeds. All right, I'll just put these over here now. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pinch it together. Try to fill up those spaces. And I do have extra pens and I can show you how I put this on a pen, but again, I know Becky's life, so I feel really bad. <laughs> If anyone's in Becky's life, tell her I'm sorry I had work trouble and I had to, I don't know, I didn't see her scheduled live. I feel really bad. Now I'm just pinched it together to kind of close up some of those holes. And I want to try to keep the blue on the top as much as possible. That way, because we're going to be shaving it off layer by layer and get a different design every time. Hey, that rhymed. That was what I, that's what I really look like. Oh, good question, Valerie, what was it? Can you flip the clay block and do stuff to the other side? I'm sure you could. It'd be the same thing. Shall we try it? We can put a couple of things down here, but I wouldn't over blend it because then if the colors combine too much <laughs> with three different colors like this, 
the only thing that you have to worry about is it turning to mush not mush like the brown poopy color so like we can pierce it like a little bit but I don't think that we should do as much as we did to the other side only because again if you overwork it or over mesh it I'm afraid that it would turn out to be like brown you know what I mean but we can add in some like polka dots here yeah all right so now I'm just again making it a cube again I've never tried that Valerie so I don't know squelch what does squelch mean is that a weird millennial thing oh wait I'm a millennial in our turn all right now I'm gonna roll the top here I'm gonna try to make it flat again so now I am closing up those holes but I still want to keep my rectangular shape at the same time which is why I'm flipping and rolling and flipping and rolling 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 all right now I'm just gonna work it poo sound oh <laughs> okay oh because I said <laughs> it would <laughs> yeah okay I get you make a brown sound are you making this into a flag no that was not the plan Rivka it's just you know Makume Gani is like your pen base like that blue pen base so it'll have a different design now if it look comes out looking like an American flag hey oh but I'm sure it won't because again we're gonna take a long blade and we're gonna slice it off like you know piece by piece so now I'm just reducing it to be thicker and then I'm gonna roll it again to try to fill these holes up here Just taking it from side to side, rolling, rolling. Yeah! Okay, fine. I got you, buddy. I got you. All right. So that's probably as good as we're going to get. Now I'm just going to take it make it flat that way it's easier to shave it off roll it a little bit looks like a french flag cake <laughs> oh god all right i'm gonna do the edges again all right that looks pretty good right so now usually i would probably let this sit for like i don't know an hour or so or stick it in the fridge before i try to cut it but we're doing this on a live so we're just gonna wing it that's what Crashly does best okay so before we shave it I have to get scrap clay and make that into a sheet you'll see what I mean in just a second all right <clears throat> so here is my just scrap clay I randomly pulled out. It's gonna condition this real quick. And we're gonna roll this out on the thickest setting of the pasta machine. And then once we slice off the different layers, we'll put it on the sheet. And then you can use the sheet to wrap around a pen. And of course my scrap clay sits for a bit so it's harder to condition. But that's okay. Just gotta flatten it enough to get it through the pasta machine so it speeds it up. I think this was a sunflower at some point. Hmm. Some kind of flower it looks like. There we go. Bon appetit! Okay, now I'm on a zero, so now I'm gonna run it through. 
<laughs> that looks kind of cool. I'm gonna throw it again here. It tastes like earth. How do you know what earth tastes like? Are you outside eating dirt or something, man? That's gross. Kind of nifty. Uh, okay. Let me make sure this is the right. Yep. Now I'm going to get a longer blade here. And I'm just going to trim up my sheet. This is why you always keep your scrap clay. Did I just trim it too short? I bet I did. Of course I did. That's okay. I'm just gonna go down to a one, which will make the piece a little bit thinner, but hopefully thick enough for this. There we go. All right, now I'm going to trim it to the right size again. Helps if I use the sharp end of the blade, I guess. So you know, this sheet right here, like that, that could cover like, gosh, three or four pins easily. So I'm just measuring with the pink pen here. And this part doesn't have to be perfect either because once you put it on the pen, you'll want to roll it anyway and then trim off the ends and I'll show you what that means. That works. All right, can't tell if it's flat or a big clump. Flat. You think this right here would make an awesome pen? It looks like something's on fire. Does that not look like flames? It's like the desert is on fire. <laughs> yeah, because there's the sun. It's hilarious. Oh, man. <laughs> that was not an, even intentional. Happy accidents, as Bob Ross says. All right, let me clean some of this stuff up. All right. I want this Kato stuff really gets on my tray. It drives me crazy. Okay, I'm going to sit there right there. All right, so now we're going to take our piece of Makume Gane. I'm gonna actually put it right there. <laughs> That's right when we make an awesome pen. Looks like a desert <laughs> backdrop. Half and half. Star Wars desert! <gasps> I made it home, what are you doing? Oh man, you missed it, it's Makume Gane. So we're doing red, white, and blue Makume Gane. So we took a bunch of stripes of red, white, and blue. There's translucent in between. And then we pierced the top of it quite a bit. This is scrap clay. And it's rolled out on a two. And now we're going to shave off the Makume Gane. How would you make the clay joint? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Where'd my blade go? You know, I just had it. There we go. Oof. Okay, so this is my longer blade. Howdy, Melly! Welcome! Okay, so we have our Makume Gane brick here. This is just a piece of scrap clay. So now, this is the part that takes practice. Like, I am not... Why are you giving me that face, Odd? It's distracting me. What's the matter? This is the part that takes practice. Because you want to shave it off as best as you can. But you want to make... See? <laughs> you want to make them as thin as you can. 
just so you get more bang for your buck. You know what I mean? Woo! Like this piece broke, so I'll just toss this over there. So then, the more slivers you make here, I want a scrap clay pen. I'm thinking about making some actually. You just take your little pieces and you'll put them on your sheet. Then it just kind of forms to be an awesome sheet of clay. All right. I'm gonna keep cutting and the pattern should be different. There we go, gotta get it moving. Dang it, broke it again. And it's also because it's quite warm still, it would not be as hard to shave off if it wasn't as warm. But again, this style, this Bakume Gane style, it's not meant to be symmetrical by any means. Isn't this pretty though? Oh my gosh, I love it. Ugh, so I'm just gonna kind of layer it. How very Yoda, Aiden. What? All great art comes with great practice. Aw. All right, so now I'm gonna try to get this to stop deforming on me. Yeah, and clay moves with your blade so much when it's warm. And obviously this is warm. We just did a bunch of stuff to it, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna see if it works better this way. Nope, it's not gonna, because then I can't tell how thick I am. I'm just gonna try it this way again. I'm just kind of rocking the blade. Nope, broke it. There you go. But again, that's okay. I'm just gonna kind of pinch it down and then put it together like a puzzle. Oof, put this piece over here. Put this one right over there. Yeah, see it clumped up on me, man. Man, oh man. Told ya. <laughs> Clay master, oh my gosh. <laughs> You're gonna make me blush. This was a cool one though, for real. I'm just going to kind of overlap this one right there. See, and then we'll take our roller and roll out this sheet here. Yeah, let's move a little closer so you can see. Make that better. All right. See, so yeah, this is deforming when I make my cuts. <gasps> it's okay. We just got to keep reshaping it. It'll be all right. patriotic and all that but red white and blue there might be a f wait <laughs> odd you're so silly I think it looks cool but you can do this exact same thing with any colors you want hi honey Hello. how's it going Heyo, got a full piece. It was a thicker piece, geez. I'm just pinching it to flatten it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. burr, burr, burr. Is anybody else singing patriotic music? You got a good balance between them though. No one color is overpowering the others. I think what helped that is having the thin layer of translucent in between. Oh, almost got a clean piece. It was close. It's okay. Put this piece over there. There we go. Can you imagine how cool this would look like with pink, purple, and black? Ooh, maybe sparkle silver too. Woo, nailed it. Isn't that pretty? 
It's like so random. Put this one over here. Also, I kind of want more pigment powder. Oh my gosh, we could have put pigments in between the layers. We could have totally did that. But with pigments, if you put the pigments on clay, it doesn't like to stick to other clay very much. So it would have been hard to put it in between the layers. That one there. We might get to have some left over. Maybe, baby. Darn it. I was doing good there for a minute. And now I'm breaking them. Oops. Bring that out. Listen, Linda. There we go. Please not be done. Sorry, I just, I'm trying to fill the silence and I don't know what to fill it with. So I just randomly sing Christmas music. <laughs> oh gosh. It looks like paint pouring. Ooh. I'm humming the Imperial March. Isn't that? I can play that on the piano, by the way. Ugh, come on. There we go. I missed why you needed the flat base piece. Are you just covering it up? Yes, that is exactly what I'm doing. Since we're shaving this off to make this pattern stretch, this is just a piece of scrap clay that we're covering. So this sheet of clay here is what we can actually use to wrap the pins. But it's gonna look a little bit different than it does now because we're gonna take a roller, like a rolling pin and kind of flatten this out because the pieces I'm putting on it are different thicknesses. Have you found another texture you like to use besides the scales or, or for your, Pig pal? Pig pal? Yeah, actually. <coughs> Look at this one. This one's fun to use. I haven't done a video or anything on that one yet. But texture rollers. Like if you roll the pen, or if you cover the pen with a thick piece of clay, and then you use that, I can do that on this one. I can show you. But again, I don't want to take away from Becky. I keep thinking about that, and I know I keep bringing it up, so I'm sorry. But if you'd like to go to Becky's live, please. You can watch this in the replay. I just feel bad, I guess. I'm sorry. Ooh, gonna put this right there. But I swear, before I went, she didn't have one scheduled. I just feel bad. <sighs> There's that one. Okay, so maybe... I think we're gonna have some left over. That's nifty. Well, I broke this piece, but that's okay, because I only need a little bit right there. This, I think stretch yeah pig pal pigment powder oh pig pal <laughs> that's adorable pig pal Ugh. well broke that one. Oh well there we go okay now oh, it's pretty thin well that's okay just to give you an idea so let me square this up again here so you see how this side looks now, if I came over here to shave this off, this was the bottom, so this not this pattern isn't going to be as crazy, I bet. But let's just see. Yep, we got to get off the bottom piece. So yeah, you know what? I bet if we did not do as much stabbing on one side and kind of like split it up, I bet it would make the pattern stretch further. You know, this this is mainly red, and that red has Kato mixed with it, so it's just not wanting to keep its shape at all. I'm just going to go back to the other side here. There we go. Crashly does not like Kato. And now I'll put this right there. So it's like a puzzle. Okay. This was scrap, and then I still have 
lots left over. And again, this sheet of clay that I made here will make quite a few pins. This is what the sheet looks like so far. And they're all overlapping or doing something. Isn't it? I wanted a cute term for those pins. That really is a very cute term. Ops absolutely. It's audified for sure. I just did that one up. Oh, to make a matching mini pin. Ooh, probably. I'm not going to make all the pins right here, but I'll keep the sheet safe for other times. So I could. And yes, this would be left over enough to, gosh, cover quite a bit. Because I could even reduce it more. Yeah. But this is going to cover like four pins easily, four or five at least. So now I can take my roller here and I'm not pressing too hard. All I'm doing is since those little slices that we made were different thicknesses, which you will get when you're, you know, layering Makume Gane slices, I'm just using the roller to kind of even them out as best as I can. Hi, Bianca! So now I just kind of made them more even. That's what it looks like. And now I'm going to roll it through first on the thickest setting. I'm going to be rolling it this way. Just to make sure it's even-ish. Close as much of those gaps as I can. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that's a good one. You could put white pig pal on it too to make it shimmer. I could do that. Would you be able to chill the leftover block too? Yes, yeah, this will sit. Yeah, I mean, I covered way more because now that I added those extra pieces, this is probably a good six, seven pins right here. Because, like, you'll see. I'll wrap a pen with it real quick. But since this red clay likes to shed so much and stick to stuff, i got to keep this clean for when I roll the pens. Now I'm going to flip it over. Okay. I think i got an air bubble right there. Holy moly. Flip it over. And I'm going to clean up one of these sides here. straighten this out all right and I got a pen where did I get it okay there you go this is just a standard pink pen this is longer they do make them in two sizes the shorter one is about that much shorter this is a longer one and I'm just gonna put this light it up a little bit trim off some of the sides so it's not like overbearing but again, that doesn't have to be perfectly measured because once you roll it, we're going to trim it anyway. Right there. Okay. So now you can start to roll it up and try to make your beginning part where the clay piece is as even as possible, as straight as possible, I should say. And I like to take my finger now and like just press it down. That way, this part is flat. So when I roll it, I can make the clay kiss itself. What I mean by that is you'll feel when it touches the flat piece. And then if you roll back, um, yeah, I don't know if you can faintly see this line here, but then you know exactly where to cut it. Just make it kiss itself. All right, now I'm going to move the scrap clay and put this over here. Here's some more scrap. Fish. This side looks like salmon. <laughs> Spin it around and you have an optical illusion. Let's see. 
What? I see Spider-Man in there. Ooh. Okay, so now it should be the right size exactly. So I'm going to kind of push it and get this other side, the flat part, to press up evenly. See how I'm doing that? But I want to push all the air bubbles out while I'm doing it. Mm, it takes practice, I guess. It's kind of hard to explain how I do it. I'll just make them touch. But then push air out at the same time. But then you don't have one side that's thicker than the other side. So then once they are touching, <clears throat> then I'll go from the middle, work my way out just to make sure no air gets trapped in there. Which that's very, very easy to do, especially with Makume Gane. Because air can get below those little pieces that we put on the sheet. All right. Now I can just flatten this out more. And I just use my fingers to kind of get rid of that crease. But not too much because I don't want the colors to blend. There we go. All right, so you can see it's not completely gone, just mostly. All right, so now I'm gonna just roll it with the palm of my hand, but nice and slow, because if there is still a little bit of air trapped in there, you don't want to roll too fast or it won't latch to the plastic pen part. So we're, go we're gonna start off rolling really slow to work the rest of the air out. And this is just going to flatten it out, make it more even. Hard to say, easy to show words, exactly. <laughs> like there might be words for it somewhere out there, but I don't know what they are. All right, now is when I take my exacto knife, wherever that may be. Somewhere over the rain. Oh, come on. I think it fell down in here. Hold on. Gee, that was up here. There it is. Slurp of coffee. Oh, bye, Bianca. Hi, Kaylee. Welcome. We're making pens today. Ooh, ta 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 tia. Okay, so I rolled it slightly after doing Makume Gane. Ooh, Tia, you should rewatch this because this is like one of the best beginner techniques to learn for real. Because there's just there's no way to really mess it up, you know? It just it looks awesome no matter what. So now you see I have all this extra right here. So I'm taking my exacto knife and I'm going to cut straight down. Once I feel I've hit the plastic piece, that's when I turn it sideways to trim the extra off. Okay, I missed a little bit. I trim the extra off. Flip it over and do the same thing. Go straight down, do make it go flat, and then just spin it. All right. Kaylee, Kaylee, Kaylee. How is your sister this evening? Oops. I'm running out of room. All right. So this is what it looks like so far. So now I like to take my acrylic block here. And this I found at Hobby Lobby. And I found it in the stamp <laughs> section. It had this size one and then a smaller square one. And you want to trim those ends first because it might seem silly because we're about to trim them again. <laughs> but you want to do it first because if you trim it, it allows room for more air to escape. You know what I mean? Air bubbles really are not our friends, okay? 
We do have an Etsy Aiden. Why, you wanna buy a diamond painting pen, buddy? Or cover minders, there's cover minders on there too. <laughs> and this just makes it nice and even and smooth. Again, one of those things that's probably not necessary per se, but Crashly just likes to do things extra, as we all know. All right, so now I'm going to, yes, trim it again, same exact way. All right. I found a recipe to make watermelon candy. I bought a huge watermelon. Just so I can make the candy bonus. Get to eat watermelon too. Heck yeah! Oh, bye Melly. Thanks for stopping in. Okay. So now is where you can shape the ends if you want to. And by that I mean like come to more of a, a curved kind of point. Like an actual pen or pencil. And to do that. Oh, stop shutting on my thing. I just take one side and I lift it up slightly. I don't know if you can see that. So have it slightly lifted up. Then I'll take this finger here and then roll with it tilted. And this trick I learned from Jeremy. Then I'm going to lift it up a little bit. And then you'll see how now it comes to a curved point there. And yes, you guessed it. We're going to trim it again. Got that right. Oops. Okay, this time I'm going to bring it over the edge slightly here. Okay. Then I can press it down flat. So now it's overlapping just a little bit. If you see that some has gotten in the hole, because you don't want too much in the actual hole or your diamond painting tip won't fit. Okay, nope, there we go. That's what it looks like. I thought I just felt an air bubble. Maybe I didn't. If you ever do get a big air bubble in the middle, you can just stab it with your X-Acto knife and then you just work the air towards the hole you made. And then you'll just have to like reflatten it. Yeah, there is an air bubble right there. So yeah, I'm just going to stab it make a little slit and then just work the air towards it. We don't want air bubbles. And then like slowly tap over it. If that makes sense. Hopefully that made sense. Again, it's hard to explain with words. Then I'm just going to reseal it like that. I'm just going to look to make sure that that's completely covered. Yep. Perfecto! Oh, uh, Crashly, have you made clay DB pens with the hourglass shape? Yes! I have done that! I have one right here! Whoa! So this is one that I made, like, way too thick. <laughs> but this is actually Makume Gane! But they wanted Halloween colors. But I decided it was too thick. But I can do that maybe next week, Tutorial Tuesday, if you want to see how I got that done. Uh, let's see, any other questions that I missed? Super? Uh. Oh my god, if you listen to a crash late and lurk and work, it sounds like an interesting rated X movie. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Valerie, we missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> what do I sound like? Oh my god. Anyway, so I'm going to do the same thing. Lift it slightly and then roll it. Oh my gosh, Jen. Thanks a lot. Now I can not say anything without putting it in an X-rated movie thought process. Jeez. Okay, now I push some extra up. So now I'm just going to retrim. All right, and again, this time, just taking the edges here and slightly putting it over 
the rim of the pen. Oh God, I said rim, great. <laughs> okay, and then press it flat. All right, and I do have a little bit of hang here, so I'm gonna trim that off too. All right. So now this one would be done. Now I could take my, I'll probably take, yeah, I would take this one more time and just do it slightly so I don't have to trim it again, just to make sure there's no dents. All right, now if you wanted to take some, like um, some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, you can clean up this white a little bit because it got a little bit of red in there. I'm not going to because I like the way that looks personally. But you could take some alcohol and then like a cotton swab and then like just wipe it off if you wanted to. Again, I'm not going to. Oh, I'm sorry, just a little sassy tonight, but it made you smile. Of course it made me smile. You knew it would. My three-year-old brother is being mean to me. Oh, Momo could never be mean. Aiden has, <laughs> Aiden has a little brother, two little brothers and a little sister now, don't you bud? So now, oh, odd. did you want to see what it would look like with the pig pal? Okay. I'll put just a little bit on here and then we'll be good, okay? Let me find the white pig pal. Where is the white pig pal? That's gold, gold, black, purple. Oh, there it is. I don't know if I had a brush in here though. So this is the white pigment powder and I have a brush here. This one is called Pearl White. Can you make a mini hourglass pen? I can, Kathleen. Hey, by the way, hey. <laughs> now everything we, we say is going to sound naughty, right? And it's because she said that. <laughs> now everything is naughty. Oh, where's the skewer? Okay, I have just a skewer here. I'm gonna put in the middle. Okay. And then this brush that I'm using is just like a, not a thick brush. It has like the lighter, I don't know what to call that, like thinner little bristles. Oh. Let's see. So yes, we can do a mini hourglass pen. I think I might do the shaped pens next week for that tutorial Tuesday, if that's okay with you. Okay, so now this is what the pigment powders look like if you haven't seen them already. This one is the pearl white. I'm just gonna lightly press it in there and it collects very easily on the brush. And if you wanna see more of the pigment powders, you should check out last week's live because that's all we did, isn't it guys? <laughs> we played with pigment powders on textured pens. Ooh, that gives it a pretty look. I'm just brushing it on here. And the white does not go on very thick, so I might keep dipping it, yeah. Well, see, it came on like that time. Now I gotta spread it around. See what I mean? A little bit goes a long way, y'all. I'm just gonna spread it out here. Ah, that was a good idea. This is why... I'm telling you, you guys are going to make me rich with all these cool ideas that we have together. I promise. If I end up being famous someday, and like I'm on Oprah or something, I'm taking you with me. All of you. There we go. Oh, that's really pretty. Yep, that was a good idea. Love the shine. Yes! Didn't I tell you to label the pig pals? I should have, but I don't have a label maker, okay? Tell Kerwin, listen, we should all message Kerwin on Facebook and say, Crashly needs 
the Zion sticker maker or a cool label maker because then I could label all the things all the time and I would love to not just for these but for my glitters even for like my actual clay bricks too because the label the name's on the label but it's really tiny so now I'm just going up and down the whole pin here in case that there's like another like a cluster of the pig pal <laughs> it really does masking tape and sharpie Aiden Michael gosh you must not have a craft room this is me when you get your greens oh my gosh I can't wait for those greens <sighs> we need to also <laughs> message Kerwin all of us and petition for Crashly to get <laughs> this series that has the greens and the yellows. Okay, this is what it looks like now. So we did the Makume Gane. Put it on a sheet, wrapped it around a pen, and then we used the Pearl White Pigment Powder and just did a light coat of that. Now, this is the pan that I use only for clay. Okay, so this is not for food. This is just clay. This is just a skewer. And this is how I bake it. Just set right like that. I don't know what all this brown is. It's just burnt pan. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. You are forever squinting. What? Oh, yes, I know. My eyes are awful. Anyway, so this is exactly how I bake it. Now, I don't have my oven preheated right now, but I will go preheat it to 275 and bake this for one hour. <laughs> you would go crazy and label your whole house. I can see it. Kerwin would have a label stuck to his head saying Kerwin. No, it would say mine. Like, mine? <laughs> <laughs> you know I would too. That's so funny. I think Valerie might know me a little well. Hey, Kerwin. <laughs> they said if I get a label maker, I'd go crazy and label everything in the house. Do you think I would do that? Yes. <laughs> what? That I'd was... probably wake up with a label on my forehead. That's what they just said. The snore king or something like that. They said that I would put a label or, on your forehead. Or they say stop snoring. You'll be like, Kerwin, go look at the mirror. <laughs> you know that you would run to the mirror and be like, what's on my face? My nothing, yay, yay. And you'd be sitting back busting <laughs> up laughing. Oh yeah, you know it. I'd probably record it too. Anyway, <laughs> that is it for this one. I call my Zyron. Is that what it's called? Zyron sticker maker in my Xbox. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I use overbaked pan for my resin pieces. Right, that's what this is. Okay, it's nothing it's nothing gross. That one kind of looks gross, but it just because I bake it over and over, okay? Looks like you need more pens to bake. Probably what I'll do is go preheat my oven and then while it's preheating, make up a couple more of these because again, that's still a long sheet. You saw how much it took to wrap this one pen. Not a lot. Like that thick of a piece, you know, like one, two, you can make, you can get quite a bit out of there. It's such a lonely pen, I know. I can't even recall a time I've only baked one pen at a time. And what I'll probably do with these scraps, since they're still red, white, and blue, 4th of July coming, I'll probably just squish these and marble these. And then make those into pens too and bake it with this one. So, I'll do that. And then on Instagram... Yeah, I'll use this scrap too. No, that's just white and translucent. This I'll save for another time though. But on Instagram, I will post like a picture of them when they're done. So if you're not following me on Instagram, go do it. Crafts with Crush Light. Yes. Um, I'm back. Sorry, I'm a photographer and was editing a photo. Oh, well, cool. We're done anyway. Like that's it for this live, y'all. But thank you so much for joining me. I'm really sorry it was late. I will be on this project at work, just a heads up, until July. <laughs> so yeah, just a heads up. I want to say that these Tutorial Tuesdays will be at 6.30 like I planned. However, I, I don't know when I'll get stuck on a call. So they will be every Tuesday. That 
I can make a commitment to. Just not really sure on the time. It goes day by day. Okay. One of those pens look amazing in my stash. <laughs> you got stuff coming, Brian. Don't you worry. I'm supporting your no buy. Don't you worry. Okay. I got you. Crashly got you. All right. So thanks to y'all for so, so much for hanging out. Let me know if you need anything or if you have any questions if you're watching on the replay. And yeah, give it a thumbs up on your way out. And I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.